Oh, fade. <laughs> Folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome aboard uh, Between the Rules, Murder Hobo Inc.'s opportunity to go ahead and give you a talk show about relevant D&D &D topics to suit your campaign. Tonight, we're going to be discussing world building and the timeline factor. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive if you wanna buy our stuff, as our gorgeous model David can show you our latest uh, shirt, uh, tinyurl.com RPG swag. If you wanna join us on Discord, tinyurl.com slash mhoboinc Discord. Uh, if you wanna see here, which is the most important message that we have here, get in touch with us uh, at mhoboinc on Twitter or mhoboinc at Gmail. Uh, yes, Janelle is looking furry tonight. <laughs> she really does. Um, she hasn't been outside in such a long time that, you know. It, it's the isolation. No good. hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, folks, as you recognize all of these, if uh, you have seen us before, if uh, you are a first-time viewer, welcome aboard. Uh, who are we? I don't know. Let's start with David. David, who are you? Tell us about yourself. Hi, what I'm are your David. likes and dislikes? What's your favorite day? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I, I like long walks on the beach, usually around sunset. Uh, now, my name's David. I'm uh, one of the newer hobos, and I've uh, been playing with these guys for a while, and I keep coming back. So that, That's your Twitter profile, right? New murder hobo? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I, it's going to wear out. So <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'll be a uh, middle-aged hobo. A middle-aged hobo. Yeah. Uh, Harry Carroll, uh, <laughs> tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. <laughs> What, what happened to Bearded Carol? You're Bearded Carol, not Harry Carol. Uh, I loved you calling the Cubs games. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Come on. <laughs> and be drunk. Kyle, who are you? Tell us about yourself. Uh, I am Kyle. Uh, uh, um, I DM. I play. I create. I'm essentially the best person uh, you'll see tonight. <laughs> sure. Sure, yeah, that'll work. Uh, Non-Harry Carroll. He threw down the gauntlet. It's like... <laughs> As I said, I have plenty of hair. You know, see? So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Carol. I'm a commissioned mini painter, a longtime gamer, and sometime GM. And hopefully, maybe at some point, I'll be GMing here again. Uh, but, but I know, I know, I got to come up with what the next part of the plot is. And actually, tonight's uh, tonight's topic is somewhat relevant to what I'm doing in that game. So timelines, that's it, it. Actually, is relevant because the way I want to do the series of scenarios I want to do for here is going to be literally, uh, basically, it's going to have an overarching overarching story that goes to it. But you, and, you could be and, less surprised that we come up with relevant topics. <laughs> well, not always to the stuff I'm doing. Well, that's true. I think this one was Kyle's. I got it off Discord. Again, tinyurl.com, mhobo, Inc. Discord. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. You know, viewers out there, you can always suggest topics to us that you want to know. Let us know what you want to do, what, what topics you want us to cover. And you we'll, even made the suggestion room. I did. So, you know, come on there and chat and with them. I'm the only one who's filled it. Actually, I put something in there, too. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm the only one that reads it. Because <laughs> I'm tired of making shit up. Uh, folks, we ran two games this week. We're starting to slow down out of the coronavirus isolation tank. Uh, so we've got another one planned this Thursday. Uh, looking for one more player. Uh, if not, I'm going to have Carol, so don't give me another player. <laughs> uh, it is our 100th game. 100. Oh, but I will play now. I didn't realize so, it was going to be... It is 100. Uh, so join us Thursday, same time, same bat time, same bat channel uh, for that game. But first, uh, before we delve into that aspect, let's go ahead and give you a quick recap or a long recap on the games we had. First one was Saturday. Kyle was the DM. I got the night off. Thank God. Uh, it was called the Starter Something. It was episode 98. Kyle, 
Uh, you said you were going to briefly give us what your inspiration was and let uh, David and Carol, who both played in it, discuss. There's a fifth dimension beyond that which is known as man. Oh. This dimension of vast space and <laughs> infinity. This is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition. And it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the murder hobo zone. <laughs> Do you, you know what? Do you have a teleprompter there? Or did you rehearse that shit? We rehearsed uh, that shit. I memorized it for uh, a <laughs> Saturday <laughs> game. And then I completely spaced and forgot to use it. There oh, you go. man. It's excellent. So, uh, this past Saturday's game, the starter something, um, <laughs> is a one shot I design combining uh, uh, some third party uh, supplement to really bring in a Cthulhu feel for fifth edition. And I have been scratching my brain about how to use it. And then the quarantine happened and I had to learn how to bake bread. And as I was making the starter and the yeast, I just looked at that and I was like, oh, that's that's my monster right there. That thing is <laughs> disgusting, it smells and it's alive. Uh, and so I designed that and uh, the way I have it figured, it's a great way to introduce a party into a more cosmic horror, that 16th through 20th level gap there at the end and so hence the starter something the start of something eh, eh, eh. Yeah. you yeah. totally yeah. need yeah. you a totally lot of need to went into it and none of it came out on the other side is what i figured but uh i will let my players uh tell you all what happened uh starting with david, david. because he'll okay. eventually finish what he's talking about <laughs> Sure. Uh, Deuce, man. If you really want to find out about your starter and how relevant it is to your game, read Kitchen Confidential. They called it the Beast. <laughs> so constantly <laughs> had to feed the Beast. <laughs> so uh, our episode, uh, The Starter Something, uh, starts with us uh, investigating, uh, well, what looks like an explosion at a bakery, but uh, also turned out to be a murder site. So um, the perpetrator supposedly was, uh, is it Nana Keebler? Nana Keebler. Nana Keebler. Act her shop. I mean, they were the invaders. I don't figure that's murder. I figure that's <laughs> well, well, the guards the, didn't the, see it that way. The very beginning of your guys' adventure back when you first started that first level. So the guards here are stupid. Yeah. Not <laughs> right. I caught that. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> A plan, apparently, our character, uh, well, at least one character was too, because I could not figure out how to get past the guards. So. So uh, we've gotten, we got little clues. We got a clue from uh, Nana Keebler. She gave us, she slipped us a sheet of paper. You looked at it. Uh, it looked like a recipe on one side and turned out to be a mysterious symbol on the other. Uh, that symbol right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. this symbol causes uh, a little dread in one of our other characters. And um, as we finally get our way inside the bakery and uh investigate the area we we discover things aren't quite as they appear to be uh for example the oven uh nana keebler had this amazing oven <laughs> uh, i'll just leave it at that but turned out there was a mystery about the the oven that we quickly kind of saw but you know how we can, how Nana Keebler came into it. That is a different question. Uh, let's see. Uh, we started to discover that there's there's things that Nana Keebler was a little more I don't know. We say progressively wealthy than what she was letting on. I mean, it wasn't just the success of her bakery. We found some significant items within her office, and within her office there were three tape uh, tapestries. Uh, depicting four, four, four tapestries. Tap tapestries. That's right. Yeah. 
depicting different scenes of uh, of an adventure. Uh, let's see, uh, what were the the scenes, Kyle? You had the gold dragon above his horde with the adventure party. Yes. Uh, Chornabog above a mountaintop, but jar large giant demon with another adventuring party. You had a fey court hunting down a polymorphed human to look like a deer. Uh, and then you had um, the image of a splendid king in gold. Oh, man. <laughs> and my character made the mistake and gazed into that tapestry. <laughs> had to go. What, we had to actually go through that because that's behind that was where uh, the items we needed to find or well, at least the remnants of them were back there. Right. right. So we needed to actually do do exactly that. Unfortunately, you, you didn't, weren't not quite strong-willed enough to... My character wasn't, <laughs> obviously. Now, see, here's the thing. If you're going to play a Cthulhu-based game with all sorts of wisdom saves, bringing a cleric is an excellent idea. I had a wisdom save of 10 which certainly freaking helped, and especially in this case, because I did make the game. The, 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 I found the uh, safe or whatever you want to call it that was, or the cupboard that was behind it that we needed to find. Yeah. Uh, low wisdom <laughs> scores. Yeah, you're kind of at the mercy of the GM at that point. Right. So. But uh, yeah, as we discover things aren't quite as they appeared at Nana Keebler's, we discover uh, an item that she wanted us to save. Uh, uh, we get called outside. There were witnesses. They witnessed uh, figures uh, that uh, ran from the bakery into the sewers. So we tracked them down I, into the sewers. Were hmm? rats, I think. I think you're not spoiling if you say that. Yeah, okay. there were, were rats. rats. Were rats who yeah. ran into the sewers. Yes. So I'm sorry, guys. I had to use that old trope. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Oldie but a goodie. Yeah. And then that's when the fun ensued. So <laughs> right away we get we get snafu'd by a trap. It should have been obviously how to solve it, but yeah, I kind of forgot it. I had an uh, an item that I could have used to help solve the the puzzle. Yeah, I didn't even think of using it. <laughs> So, yeah, I got. I just got confused by the. I mean, apparently we did get instructions, so we did figure them out or something. But I got confused by what point we were because it said pull the lever and open the door, and I pulled the lever and the door didn't open. So I pulled it again, which was a mistake, and I relocked it and reset the trap. Yep, and then we activated that, the trap. <laughs> trap hurt too. That was a nasty trap. That was a nasty trap. So I mean. Well, uh, when I cast it, that's when I cast. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, ethereal movement. movement. Freedom hmm. movement. That's when I cast, it. and I don't think it was an hour between there and the final fight, so it should have been running the whole time. I was amazed that freedom of movement worked for that. I mean, uh, I've I, like, I, I like misty step. It was like you move once and that's it. And no, no, it works for an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just took you an hour to get there <laughs> between the yeah. uh, um, other thing that you guys ran into and then mm -hmm. going through the actual sewers you didn't have the best of survival roles on that one which is why you actually only encountered one trap there were three different traps depending on how well you rolled on survival and you may not have encountered any of them if uh, you rolled high enough yeah we only got one so we apparently did all right yeah well and then i was also like two hours baby this is how long it's gonna last spoiler yeah. it oh. didn't <laughs> <laughs> oh man so after we make our way through the trap uh we discover uh the more were rats, two dead rare rat, uh were rats in the sewer uh one of them was actually still alive spoke and then suddenly expired and when he did starter came out of the the were rat 
So we continue on down to the sewer, and then we make our way. <laughs> Nothing weird about that, guys. Uh -uh, <laughs> no, no. I'm trying not to spoil everything in case they want to see it. So uh, in case they want to see it, well, oh they've they got it, to see it. They've got to see it. it. It's amazing. It was a great scenario. Yeah, if you like train wrecks, this is this is a great one. <laughs> Honestly, that's the only kind of game I run, apparently. <laughs> And train train wreck being an actual adventure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, we bank our way into uh, God. I, I, uh, I guess it, what was it? It was like a main uh, sewer cistern thing or something like that. Essentially, yeah, um, uh, an amphitheater in the sewers below. That was the uh, Were Rat Guild. Yes. Get ready to rumble. Yes. So, uh, as we what made our way into this amphitheater, we discovered there's a ritual going on, and within the center of the ritual is this yellowish blob configuration, beast-like creature with mouths opening left and right. It almost looks like a gi uh, gibbering wah or something like that. I think that is D&D's uh, answer to uh, Cthulhu. I think the gibbering mouther and the mm -hmm. uh, 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 the call of Cthulhu monster that it was are supposed to be the same thing, but the Could gibbering be. mouther doesn't really. No, that doesn't up. resonate with what this was. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, turned in turned out to be a major confrontation uh, for that evening, and uh, yeah, all kinds of zaniness. <laughs> uh, Carol, go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, wait, no, no, no. What happened to you, David? What, what happened to you? Oh, you, it's right. You were filled with too much dread. Yeah. Uh, yeah when I am. Insane, insane. This was such, this was, uh, it was a, it was a big fight. Now, to be honest, this is why it actually went long. And it was why I expected it to go long. I joked, he, he can attest to the fact <laughs> she, that. She's I, hacking on you. Stop about it going on but the reason why is we are a bunch of 16th level adventurers and who started at 16 and didn't really know their resources up until 16. <laughs> one of us didn't even know the class at all <laughs> when you're running don't throw running. carol under the bus like that David. <laughs> i'm not throwing <laughs> either of them under the bus <laughs> no when you're when you're uh, when you're when you're playing 16th level and whether you're the gm or the players the battles do tend to be longer. I mean, you you have a whole lot more hit points that you're dealing with here that you have to get through. Even if you do a lot, you know, a lot more damage you did at first, it's still going to be that many more hit points that you have to get through for something that's a really epic fight. So even though it went long, I think it was appropriate in this case. I think it it, it needed to, and you actually did give us the opportunity. You were you were t asking, as we call it, about 10 after. So He was just trying to make the two-hour deadline. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> and basically, I said, it's up to you. What you want to do, you're the GM. No. And you wanted to go on. And I, I think that was the right call because it became a whole – it was a very challenging fight. Yeah. And the only, so the only thing – I remember one point, and I mentioned this earlier on, in Green Room, was – the one thing that my character was not prepared for was to being engulfed. I had literally no way out except for the fact that probably that spell probably should have been running. So, so Kyle threw me a bone, thankfully, and I was able to surface long enough to get out. <laughs> but, well, it was either going to be did your... you or me, but my yeah. strength score was too strong. That rat would not have thrown me in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, no, that was, that was, that was fine. That was absolutely, that was a perfect move. Although I did question, I thought you said it was the one that we passed by in the hallway that seemed to have died with the starter coming out of it, but I may have been mistaken on which rat it was. You are correct. Uh, the where rats were, you didn't necessarily ask uh, uh, story questions of the, were rat who was still living in the sewers mm -hmm. uh and so you missed a uh, 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 part of the plan where it was just this uh one singular were rat who knew nana keebler's secret or at least an idea of it 
uh, investigated his four other friends and he was going to take over the uh, Were Rat Guild uh, from um, uh, blackmailing Nana Keebler. Uh, but they got in over their head and one by one they had uh, uh, succumbed to it until finally um, Singular Were Rat was just like completely under the um, the will of something uh, other than his own and was seeking to do what Call of Cthulhu monsters do. Hey, on, on that note, there was only a limited amount of questions we could ask that rat, so, you know. Uh, I remember the cleric not even trying to heal the were-rat. <laughs> was like, I I, often he's dead, I don't care. I'm not wasting resources on him. Actually, it's more the it's more the fact that usually if a if you found if one of us fell and we were still alive, however many, you know, clearly it was a long time after he crawled back down here, we're still going to be alive. We're going to be stable. We're just, of course, we'd probably also be up walking around. You know, so, we had a paladin with us. They they could have yelled. Could have done that too. Yeah, she <laughs> <laughs> could have done it. But it's, it's all fair, but that was yeah. one thing I remember you said. There was only a limited amount of questions we could was, ask. Yeah. Try to ask them. If yeah. he healed, he got more questions, but yes, he was going to eventually succumb because of the uh, infection he had. He had uh, a yeast infection. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a fun scenario, though, mm. and it was definitely Cthulhu. I, I will say this. Uh, the pattern usually is you come bump into a few weird things at the beginning and then by the time you get to the end it's holy hell and that's when you know you're losing serious amounts of sanity which i think is kind of how the build-up was in this game because it, it felt it felt like that at least you know when we get to the the main pit you know i think we all had to make we all had to make saves when we got yeah. in there and i was you, i was the one disadvantaged so but if you succeeded, you still took dread. So yeah, this very much felt yes. like a really well done Call of Cthulhu scenario. Uh, said so my husband runs them, so I, I I kind of see the patterns. I've played in other people's before, so I've have a little experience in this. And yeah, it felt very much like one of those games. It was and it was awesome. It was so much fun. And if you haven't seen it, watch it. It was amazing. It really was amazing. It all ends up well. It does. It. <laughs> Maybe I'll invite those guys back, the ones who survive, for a level 20 call. Well, we all, for two hours, right? For, for two, two hours, because it's nothing but a fight, and that's it. <laughs> we all survived. Just, oh, all survived. Oh, oh, spoilers. spoilers. Yeah, come on. Uh, yeah, skip the, well, skip the fuck it. Everybody lived. You don't have to watch it anymore. <laughs> there you go, God. You know what? You know what? Watch it for the little nuggets that I put in every thought-provoking thing. I made sure to build up lore behind every single bit of information really that did. most of the players ignored. Hey. <laughs> No. no, no. One other thing is Cthulhu is not about killing your characters, really. It's about yeah. driving insane. So the question is, did you get anybody insane? That's no. the question. Six of them. Nice. Oh, uh, our other game was on Sunday, and it is kind of our quasi-new campaign that we're uh, trying to get up and off the ground. Uh, they are the group from the Minions of Habu, the predecessor to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, unlike Kyle, uh, don't watch the show for nuggets of high quality information. <laughs> watch it for how many times I fuck things up uh, because I don't read the I don't know the rules. So uh, long story short, these guys have left uh, the minions of Habu after vanquishing the cultists, finding a price on their head. Uh, they go off to a roadhouse run by Patrick, possibly Swayze. We aren't really sure. Uh, <laughs> Cause some problems with the owner's daughter, who's gorgeous, and then get some information on uh, five different scenarios that they could attack. Uh, they chose one with disappearing towns so they headed to the mountainous region of metcalf uh met with the gnome slash dwarven council and got a job after meeting a very profane laced farmer 
named uh, something clever. Uh, <laughs> I had to make it up on the spot, but he was an idiot. Uh, the group is uh, headed towards the first of three different villages to try and figure out if these guys are full of crap or if there is a serious problem. Upon arriving at the first one, they have met with some skeptical information. Uh, they managed to fight some kind of mud creature and giant spiders. Uh, unlike, or just like Kyle, we ran a little bit long because they ain't playing this Sunday because this Sunday's Mother's Day. So to all you mothers out there, happy day uh so we ran a little long uh but long story short uh these guys have a long way to go and a eh, undetermined amount of time to get there uh they are a well-balanced party uh and they have been most of them have been playing together for several years <laughs> Uh, but it is entertaining. They will be back in two weeks to continue uh, their check of the Thorpe of Soto, which is missing quite a few buildings at this time. Uh, it is on Twitch still, and it is in the archive, uh, tinyurl.com, mhobo, Inc. archive. You see in the pattern here. Uh, so check <laughs> it out. It runs about two and a half hours. Uh, only a couple of fights more RP than anything else because these guys love to, uh, spoiler alert, throw each other under the bus. Uh, and Copious V. Bitters the Third did a very nice job of ascending several of his colleagues. I'm sure that will come back to haunt him. Again, uh, that's in the archive, still on Twitch. Take a look at it. It's kind of fun. Uh, it is set in the campaign setting of Margo, the, I think, third continent of mine uh i've run this i've i've run a group through margo before uh and that's going to bring us to our main time or our main topic of timelines uh the timeline that i initially ran the margo campaign through is not the same timeline as the guys on Sunday. Uh, how do you do that? What's involved? Well, that's what we're going to go ahead and discuss tonight. Uh, timelines are great for campaigns. They have very little effect in a one-shot, in my opinion, unless it is to go ahead and dictate lore. Oh, 500 years ago, King Eldor the Magnificent, blah, 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 blah. In a campaign setting, a timeline is extremely relevant, especially if you start doing time hops, uh, which, like the TV show Enterprise, use it sparingly or your show tanks. Uh, <laughs> but for campaign settings, it can be very useful in this DM's humble opinion. Uh, we're going to go ahead and discuss it. Uh, the first topic we'll discuss is uh, a timeline shows that your campaign is not static. Uh, one of the best things about D&D, again, in my opinion, is that D&D is such a dynamic uh, conflagration of ideas uh, that you can go ahead and just pour on the lore whenever you see fit, either as a player or as a DM. Uh, both can do it. Both should do it. Uh, why? Because the DM cannot do everything, and Dewey Docamel's background stories are awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and discuss. I don't remember it anymore. What was it? I don't, I, th I deleted it with Carol's. I <laughs> now, now I'm just making shit up. I honestly printed it out and then burned it. But, you know, however you want to do it. <laughs> Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, discuss timelines uh, from a world building aspect. Uh, we'll start with David. All, all of our panelists have DM'd at some point in time, some more than others, some less than others. It doesn't matter because uh, I've been doing this a thousand years and I still pick up nuggets. Not from Kyle's games because they all suck. But, you know, uh, David, let, let's it's go It's all ahead. your notes that you were writing. <laughs> you mean that? that yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> nice. Uh, David, what do you think about timelines? Why are they useful? Uh, I think they're very important, uh, especially if, if as a dungeon master, you're taking into account all of your uh, player characters, background stories, and stuff like that. You want to have some kind of weave 
and the thing that's going to string it all together is your timeline and it's all cohesive uh at least that would be the best thing to to base it on basically you're as a dm you'd probably want to set up a backstory for your world see all the the people (laughs) (laughs) all right okay (laughs) on that note uh no so you want to weave all all these different stories together and timelines are the best way to do it uh you can also use them as a tool to play back and forth uh you know multiple like time hopping scenarios like frank said don't want to do it too much but it's always a possibility and that's why that that's one of the main well that is a very good reason why you should establish establish a timeline the other thing is uh introducing other characters uh from the 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 world's timelines you know maybe uh some great king that had died in the earliest history of the world uh, the world that you've created or whatever its ghost comes back and your players have to interact with that. So that may have something, uh, might be a, a hook, you know, a plot hook that you can use from a timeline. So there, there's infinite things that you can do with establishing one. So that's my two cents, so. Very nice. Carol, give us your two cents. All right, so for me, uh, timeline, it, it's, it's, it helps make your world, world feel alive. Um, that, it helps, I guess, um, there's more going on out there than what's going on with the PCs. If you've got a whole world, there's definitely things going on in all sorts of places, and they may have an impact on your PCs at some point. Uh, and also, it depends on what your PCs do. You know, if they pick one quest over another, you know, that other quest you should have a timeline of what happens in that plot if you're running a campaign, uh, you know, because that will matter. And if there could be consequences for them not taking it and doing what they did, that will show up, you know, will come back around and show up in their future. So I said, I think the biggest thing is, yeah, it just makes your world come alive rather like- than static, as, as Frank said. Because yeah, there's all this other stuff, and that's one of the things in this this series of scenarios I want to do. I am going to have a timeline of events that's going on behind it, you know, especially about you know like that mystery that mystery third faction that's out there. Uh, that's the thing basically I'm keeping track of what what they're up to. So that's that's just my opinion and my two cents. So. Hey, I, I was quick this time. Yeah, yeah. Bring us up to eight cents there, Harry Carroll. Eight <laughs> cents. Eight cents. I got five good ones for you. That's seven cents. Um, uh, yeah, th- these are awesome. Um, Hold on a second. <laughs> let, me write, let me write this down. <laughs> no, um, for, I mean, yes, they make the world come alive. Um, and a lot more senses other than just, you know, what is going around, what are the monsters doing, what are the other heroes in the world doing, what's going on because you didn't take that adventure. Um, it's a huge cultural impact, too, and a good way to add lore in that direction, not just, you know, skipping time back to the beginning, your PCs have traveled, it's, oh, yeah, and uh, later this week, as you stay in town, uh, the Festival of Corn uh with the corn husk man is taking part and there's a festival with things to do um weather patterns that kind of stuff um just typical thing and it's something that um in a game where the players can't touch maybe they can't see anything relating that game to something that they understand like time it happens to all of us and even in uh, uh, D&D time passes and therefore showing that that is happening you know Nana Keebler um, aging over the 16th levels of the party um, and just adding a few more wrinkles or telling a story that happened between there um, that kind of stuff can really draw in your players uh, 
because like I said, it's something they can understand, something they can grasp, uh, as it were. It's a tangible item that they can understand. Yeah. yeah I, I like using it for purposes of, uh, as you uh, touched on, cultural uh, differences. I like uh, to make backroom deals between nations or have them fight. All of a sudden, that uh, patron that you had, eh, maybe he's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 maybe a, a different <laughs> faction killed him. Yeah, maybe you uh, know. the little town of Sleepy Hollow you, that you saw a week ago is now burned to the ground, and there's this cute little doll there that clearly the Huns burned the village and left the doll there. And and you should move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I would really like to do a campaign that is completely contingent on timing. Uh, if you can't solve the problem, someone else is going to step in. They're going to get the accolades. They're going to get the rewards. And you're going to be SOL because you aren't getting it done. And then that one time you do get it done, uh, Dwayne the Brick Johnson did something freaking amazing. And <laughs> you guys, oh, 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 you slew the evil overlord. That's nice. Uh, he just He just ate three loaves of bread in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that i mean i i think that's fun uh i i will speak for scott on this matter because i know he loves lore and uh lore gives you everything uh that is contingent upon a scenario i mean you know who gives a shit that you know there's a bunch of caves here. Well, the bunch of caves is held by kobolds and they rip off merchants and that's oh, how God. they apologize <laughs> that's how they have money oh well, well, gosh oh ah, well that show's ruined let's go ahead and scrap right, this yep, we'll go ahead screw and do this we'll, we'll, we'll edit that because i like editing uh how about how about usefulness let's go right. with uh what do you think is the most useful aspect of using a timeline we'll start with carol this time oh god uh, <laughs> a tough question because i kind of you know i just there's, there's a few things I could think to use it for. Go ahead. I'll try to put in, I'll try to think of it in terms of, say, like my, what I'm trying to do here. Um, I said to, to, to me, making the world to me, it's to make that world feel alive. That really is like the useful thing about it to me. Yeah. But to take involved to, yeah, to draw your PCs into that story and make them feel like they're part of something bigger than just, you know, what they're doing. That there's other things that are going on uh and yeah actually the whole war thing yeah war is actually important in my world too i do have uh, i do have quite a bit of history written up too that they can call upon but uh i think really yeah it's just to me it's a great plot device to draw the pieces in and make them feel like they are part of something much bigger um and actually think about your campaign I feel very much like that. The time is super important. I mean, we're talking about maybe the end of the world here. And if we don't freaking solve it soon, the world's going to end and we're probably all going to die of the plague. So time in your campaign to me is very important and it's very critical to the plot of your entire, of the story. Thank you. It's to keep the douchery down. <laughs> How's that working for you, Frank? <laughs> it's hit or miss. <laughs> uh, I, I will uh, check my notes there in the scorched remains of Tortle Manor. <laughs> uh, uh, Harry Carroll, uh, how about usefulness? <coughs> well, um... Oh, Father man. time can be You're gonna have useful. to explain that to some of our. Oh my viewers. God! You're right. Duh, I shouldn't have known exactly what that was. I've seen that show. <laughs> I don't have to explain anything, Frank. <laughs> they can figure you. it out themselves. Caitlin's <laughs> going. What the hell is that? <laughs> well, that's a case of someone just being too young. Let's be honest, guys. <laughs> I mean, twenty-nine is. That's the stopping point. Everyone out of that is a bunch of babies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Budweiser, um, Harry Carey, uh, Rocky Balboa. No? Am I losing track with the old people? <laughs> no, no we're just trying to figure out Bonanza, where you're going with us. <laughs> the Rifleman. The man from Uncle. 
Oh, that was Maud. a show movie. That, that there's Maud. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, the timeline, the usefulness. Uh, yeah, again, it's bringing life to the world, um, but it also helps in establishing villains and how you want to establish them. Do you want them to be um, kind of party dependent where that villain is at first level with the party and, you know, as they defeat the green hag that's terrorizing the village, well, suddenly that uh, villain is now um, coercing the village for money and for protection and all of a sudden the party stops a war between these two nations and um because it started with an assassination attempt now the bad guy has assumed a crown king leadership 15th level 20th level so on and so forth and it's a good way and it's a fun way of um you know that party at 20th level being just like wait from the back when <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> and that guy we could have killed <laughs> <laughs> He was a little bit. Oh, uh, 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 what is the movie? Um, the Incredibles syndrome. I'm thinking. Oh, of. yeah. Oh, syndrome. syndrome. I'm your <laughs> biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's a good way of causing things to come crashing down. The time does that, whether it's passing quickly or passing slowly. Eventually, it's going to catch up to the party in some fashion. And it's a great way of just opening up this big reveal of hey while you weren't doing this this is what happened or yeah because you did all those things you fucked everyone over uh so that's uh, another useful point other than just you know uh bringing the life it's bringing the oh shit moment to players <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah all those good things that you did uh that helped the bad guy get to where he's at <laughs> And that's where you stop being the DM and you become the forever player because all the other players remember that time and they don't want you to DM anymore. <laughs> I thought we were the heroes. Yeah, so did my bad guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys are the heroes. Uh, David, what do you think? Usefulness uh, for the timelines. Well, yeah, uh, missed opportunities, you know, paths not taken, paths that you didn't mean to take, you know, those are all, you know, definitely workable plot lines. You know, for example, that bard is suddenly a baby daddy. Now the, that offspring is now your villain, you know, so. Shout out, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, decisions. I mean, you know, that's the, the great thing about uh, timelines. I mean, you could be making decisions and you're not even aware of it. You know, your actions have consequences, you know, and they could come back to haunt you. So now, now one of the aspects about this is, and I, I am guilty as sin. Uh, each of you is DM before. Let me ask you, do you have a campaign calendar and how religiously do you annotate mm. your adventurer's log, your backup information, etc.? Uh, I think we're at Kyle. Have not run a campaign yet, so um, time frame. <laughs> uh, the one shots are all connected, but I don't necessarily have to worry about a timeline because um, eventually it'll all kind of roll into, okay, this is what happened. And if I want to, I can then uh, put the timeline in there. Um, but with that kind of stuff, it really depends on the players. Um, I mean, you're going to have murder hobos who don't care about the timeline, who don't care about, oh, yeah, these people, uh, who don't care about holidays, who don't care about anything except what is happening to them. Now, if you see potential in your players of being, you know, a great group to DM for, I think... Um, Don't see that. Never seen it. Don't know I'm it sure like. you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, then it's that time where you use the timeline to really fuck them over and draw them in, um, in which case I would do it semi-regular at least once a month 
you know, just have a review of, okay, well, this is the time frame between all this. Uh, it depends on the style of gameplay. I mean, you have combat, which takes place in six second rounds, exploration of say, going through a tomb or something like that, I think is best in 10 or, or hours. Um, if you're going outside traveling from one place to another, days or weeks and then everything else on top of that is taken over in months so if the party has downtime well you maybe the next session you hit on a holiday or something like that um just to give it a little bit more life but it really depends on um again your players whether you think it's worth being religious about it um and than just not going too crazy. But, you know, I'm the guy who decided to play a wizard as their very first D&D character, so... Rookie mistake. <laughs> I, no, I loved it. I mean, other than Frank scarring my character for life... Uh, it's what I, I do, baby. loved it, and I would probably be one of those people who, you know, has a, a giant whiteboard where they turn it into a calendar and literally <laughs> mark the days as you play. Oh my yeah. God, Kyle's in a bag of holding. What? That's right. <laughs> uh, David, it's actually a bag of devouring. I don't expect to eat here for much. <laughs> nice. nice. Well, that would explain why Father Time's there. Time's there. <laughs> uh, David, what do you think about uh, keeping up the campaign log for time purposes? Well, I mean, I haven't run a, a campaign that long to actually chronicle time, but uh, I'm in a campaign that my gm is actually doing that like we just ran curse of stride so you disappear into the mist you know but life is going on without you outside of barovia and um she she you know accounted for for that life after because prior to our characters going into the mist i mean we're very role play heavy so, I mean, there, there were things that, that we had set in motion that, I mean, that by the time we came out, they'd already come to fruition. She made, uh, I mean, she accommodated all that. Uh, one of the funniest things, though, is like, for example, I mean, our characters are really into it and we're living in, in Waterdeep. And I mean, we've got like, you know, like a like a trade empire starting. Uh, my character is has getting sh uh, set up with like you know a shop and residence and stuff like that in Waterdeep. But one of the things that he emerged with uh, from uh, Barovia is a fiance. So that comes up. So now there's a wedding to plan for, and she is accounting for that. There is a, a holiday in Waterdeep, uh, something of uh, the Ball of Blossoms, and we're using that as a plot hook uh, for the day of my wedding. So, you know, so it just goes to show time. And, you know, I mean, it is a good thing if you're that much of a task uh, master and control freak as a DM. Yes, keep your log, and I mean, yeah, it's totally doable. You can set your calendars, and you know, have your players run into it. So, you know, your fiance is going to die, right? Probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wait, did <laughs> you get? Or my character is going to die because my fiance is a freaking assassin. So, <laughs> and I'm a bard. <laughs> hey, David, are you guys done with Barovia? Are you still in Barovia? We finished Barovia. Oh, yeah. you did. Okay, so. Yeah. Your yeah. campaign carried over back into the real world. Yes, it did. Yeah. Boy, that's the interesting thing is, so I'm playing it now too. We're we're actually getting near the end where we literally only have like one other thing we're going to do and then we're going to go hit Castle Ravenloft. But the difference is after we do that, there is going to be no more because we all come from different worlds. Mm -hmm. So like we have one, we have a couple from the Forgotten Realms. I made a Pathfinder character. We had Eberron, so we have a Warforge. Uh, we had Kryn, we had so we had Dragonlance, we had a we had a Kender. Um, so yeah, so it, it's not going to continue on after after we blow it up. So there's no keeping track. Or it track. could continue on, and you leave Barovia. I think we're going to go to Sithicus. <laughs> go to Greyhawk. 
I think the plan is we're going to play something else. Uh, Phil Bar. Oh. Phil Bar. Phil Bar. <laughs> hey, have you heard of this place called Phil Bar? It's great. Mur full of murder hobos and uh, brain damaged dwarves, but it's great. Yeah. We have a um, Beetle and Grimm's box set for Avernus that is uh, we are going to probably do next, but I'm not not totally positive because I also think he's got some dwarven oh, yeah dwarven board stuff coming in on that too. It mm -hmm. hasn't come in yet. Who knows? You should, go to, you should go to Underdark and get poisoned and die. <sighs> oh gosh, what's that? Um, uh, uh, out of the abyss. Not out of the abyss, but that's a good one. Um, yeah. I'll come back to it later. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, speaking of timelines, um, what are your guys' thoughts on PCs jumping through time? Wait, 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 wait. And yeah. I mean, oh, go ahead. I never get to answer his actual question. What was his actual question? I don't remember it. <laughs> Usefulness of timelines. Usefulness <laughs> of timelines. Fine, go. So as somebody who actually is running and said basically what's going to happen here it's, it's a quasi campaign i absolutely am keeping track of the timeline um i know i know i have a calendar that i've literally created this this world and i have a calendar and days of the week and such um you know just to keep it simple because i got a bunch of new players to it i don't necessarily bring that out but I'm going to keep track of, of things because I do need to keep track of what's going on outside of what the players are doing. So it is kind of important. Um, but like before I ran, it wasn't a particularly long, long, long campaign where I needed to do that. I didn't have time jumps or things like that. It just was one kind of continuous story. And that's a lot of campaigns seem to go. But I found, found for this, though, it will be important. And actually, I think we're on our my Sunday every other week group we are doing skull and shackles and there's a lot of role play and a lot of information that comes out there and I think the GM is keeping track of what happens on each day and I'm actually writing a player journal a character journal on what happens each day so their time is actually fairly important too so it depends a lot on the campaign you're running and what you wanted to get out of it you know, that's that's thing. Sometimes time may not be as important, but sometimes it's pretty critical. OK, so there's my answer. Now, what were you going to ask, Kyle? OK, first off. Oh, no, it changed. <laughs> yeah. What was it? That thing. Uh, it is a book called Veins of the Earth, and it's not a 5e supplement or anything like that, but it is full of good inspiration to just have a underworld awful or very immersive thing to base your uh, campaign <laughs> off of um what was i going to ask i was going to ask pcs jumping the timeline mm -hmm. separating themselves out of it and coming back into it we were speaking of barovia where time had uh, did they oh. go with it was going slower in barovia faster in barovia or at the same time in uh, barovia? was there a time difference there um I don't know, uh, because, um, no, the reason being is, uh, I mean, time was happening. I forgot what the time dilation was. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at that point in Barovia, it had been like uh, 300 years, <laughs> 300 or 400 years uh, mm -hmm. Strahd has lived through up to that point. Mm -hmm. So so everything was like far, far behind. Like, I mean, everything from the culture to you know, clothing, uh, architecture, stuff like that is, it was, it was all period. So, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, from us going into the myths and to, uh, to us coming out, I mean, time, time did pass and, um, but yeah, it was like we jumped, uh, backward in time to the past. So, wow. so, so it, it, it was like time had stopped there and you're just, mm -hmm you're in you yeah. know so okay uh but yeah so to go with my question is what are your guys's thought on the pcs jumping the timeline or um like when you go to build war tom's missing and it's just ernie vinegar pete and jim and you're like yeah well let's develop some lore in the world make new characters we're going back in time 
Yeah. Uh, or do your uh, players uh, find a portal that goes back in time, goes forward in time to when guns were invented, back in time to the Stone Age? Um, maybe if you're a Dresden verse uh, uh, fan, they travel into the Fey Wild, and while they're there, an hour is 17 days, or yep. uh, one minute is one second. 200 years is one second let's go with that yeah uh that that's more dramatic um what are your guys thoughts about that either in a campaign or as a one shot no i mean i think that that's a great thing but and I, how uh, would you how would you guys implement it i suppose oh my god he's uh, jumping a timeline i'm a lazy dm so i would probably go with a portal or yeah. something like that <laughs> or you or like to one of the planes and then coming out yeah. on the other side or something like that you know so. the plane of order right next to it is the plane, of, plane time. of time you go there and you do whatever you want guys exactly hey nothing wrong with that so but uh yeah no i mean totally i would do it but like for example uh you know the group that i run in you know as far as like going in time and getting guns and bring coming it back, yeah, that ain't gonna fly. So, <laughs> ah, but, that's a shame. yeah, it is a shame, but that's called another game system. We won't go into that. <laughs> uh, Carol, yeah, I'm with, I'm with David on that. I wouldn't allow PCs to basically cheat the system by time hopping to mm-hmm. somewhere where they can get advanced weaponry and such and just blow everything up. That just no, I would I wouldn't allow that. But uh, maybe you know, shorter bursts are random. You know, like said, like you go to a realm and X amount of time. They actually be more. It'd be kind of fun where they're all from the past and they emerge and there's no way to go back. And now they have to deal with you know that future and things with things that can blow them up very easily. That could be a rather interesting. Uh, that could be Marty. We've got to go back. <laughs> it's your kids, Marty. <laughs> Uh, Mom and Dad have got a kiss at the prom. Oh. <laughs> I actually realized I have actually been through, uh, on a couple scenarios where, or part of the campaign, I have to go way back, uh, where I've had those sort of time dilations. Um, the one that really sticks out in my mind, God, this had to be like 20 years ago, real time. Um, this is when Kyle, I- you were nine. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, guys, so guys, I'm going to be 49. I'm going to be 49 tomorrow. Uh, make happy sure birthday. you wear your mask and happy wash birthday. your hands. Oh, happy you're, birthday you're then. Yeah, uh, happy birthday, Carol. Uh, no, I'm not <laughs> that young. Um, but I remember way back when, and this is when I first played Taryn. And she got, I remember she got pregnant. There's a whole freaking crazy storyline there, too. And there was, we were in a giant's castle that was based on the old, the old giant modules from way second ed. Oh, <laughs> the best. <laughs> but he put, basically put in like a time field that if you keep running through it, time would really advance very fast. And then it, it, it would go back to normal time. So in between, so basically, she, her baby did not uh-huh. remember how long elves take to have a baby. It was a lot shorter because she kept going back and forth through this this field. Um, but I said it, it can it, I, I, it can make things interesting. Of course, Critical Role comes to mind because he's had a couple times where he's had where they did go to the Fave Fave uh, Fave Realm and you had that time dilation. And then you had the Happy Fun Ball, which was that extra dimensional space that the oh, wizards. That's right. They were definitely, what was it? They were there for like, oh, they were there for like, I forget how many days and, or a day, they were there for less than a day and a week had passed and people thought something bad had happened to them. And really they were just in this happy, the happy fun ball for like a day. So, you know, obviously he was keeping track of time there, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to a degree. Well, for that, that's the milestone timeline effect. It's like, all right. When your PCs hit level seven, this is what I wanted happen in the world. Right. And then you're like, wait a minute, not enough time has passed. <laughs> Here, look at this. <laughs> you know, although that's the other thing I was thinking too was about timelines and 
especially when we're talking about what's going on in the future. Don't map out your timeline so it's so static that because the players are going to impact it no matter what you do. Oh. Yes. <laughs> your players will impact it. So don't figure out what you're right. You know, the story is going to go this way. Well, the story will go this way, you know, through, and loop a few times and then eventually catch up. But, you know, try, depending on what your players do, make sure you're flexible and what you map out for your future. The past. What are your guys' I'm sorry. I, I just had the thought and I was just curious as to what you thought about it. Doing yeah. a D&D campaign uh, that's a, a generational uh, lasting campaign where it's like, yeah, in all reality, most people have two or three moments of, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then they live the rest of their lives, have children die. Right. So you just kind of play this where it takes years and years. You may zoom in on a mo harrowing moment and maybe it's like, oh, the human has to have junior 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 who's with the original elf from the party who's still going on what, what are your thoughts about trying to run a campaign like that and i know we're uh, past time but i like making things go late <laughs> i was about to say <laughs> <laughs> dick uh, <laughs> <laughs> so like, like talking about like just having a campaign continue all the way till you have the children yeah and then, i think and then uh, there's been a few yeah. Um, I think there's been a few uh, DMs who talk about, or maybe just one particular DM who just one campaign in one world, and the players are very often on generational grandchildren or great great grandchildren of their original characters, and they play from one to twenty, and then they start at one again. But it's the it's children of that. My idea is that you just say, okay, well, between one and three, we're going to do the first generation. Three and six are going to be another generation. And uh, I mean, I at that point, it can be a little bit more random, but. I feel like that if you, your, your characters are going to be established heroes, three levels just isn't going to be, you know, it's just not going to be enough time or even five for like a really good long-term campaign. I like the thought of, I like the thought of going one to what or go one to whatever that plot is, and then they all settle down for a while, and then the children you start at one again and go on. Yeah, maybe a single that. downtime is measured in twenty years or something like that. So, when that human barbarian is finally done with his character after third level, it's like, all right, yeah, you guys have downtime. The elves and the gnomes and the party are still there, and you're doing your thing. And then all of a sudden, this new character comes walking up, who's the grandchild. And, oh. I have, that's in my in the story I've been writing. I actually sort of deal with that because Karen, being an elf, means she ages a lot slower than most humans. So what I do with the humans at the beginning of her story, as opposed to now, it's 25 years later by the mm -hmm. time we get to the end of the story, the series. Yeah. So they appeared, and one of them has reappeared, and he is, he's a human, so he's 25 years older. You know, there was, it's like, how do, yeah, how do we, how do we deal with that? And I said, it's, it's, been, it's, it was, it's been kind of fun to bring it back, bring him back as an older character, and now uh, basically in charge of the guards. You actually met him. You met the guy, actually. It was the, it's the head of the Silver Hammers in yeah. town. One who was basically giving you your orders. Mm -hmm. He was very, memory. very unsure of himself. No, he's sure of himself, but... He didn't show it. <laughs> no, no. Right. Anyway, yeah, no, that's uh, interesting. And, you know, uh, as a final thought for myself, because I think Frank wants to wrap up and go to <laughs> bed at some point. Honestly, I was up at 3 o'clock this morning, so I'm ready to go. Uh, I have but, to render this thing. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that late. We'd be still out here another hour if we were gaming. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, an interesting thing is a lot of the time we have <laughs> hours and we shrink them down into seconds with D&D. &D. Uh, certainly exploring the other option of that would be something new for your players that they wouldn't necessarily expect. and. And it might make, like I said, milestone timelines easier as opposed to day by day, calendar by calendar, week by week. And 
I don't know. That'd be a, something interesting to explore further. I agree. David, final thoughts? Uh, don't be afraid of timelines. That That's all I, I really have to say about it. I mean, if it's something that you're interested in as, uh, as a DM, uh, go the for pool. it. Go for it, you know? I mean, you may get a happy accident out of it, you know, discover something uh, about your world that you never would have thought of otherwise or something. Baby, you know, other accidents like that. Baby Hitler, you know, that scenario. Go back in town, you know. Carol, what do you think? Final thoughts? Um, Pretty much that. And I said, if you, I'll reiterate again, I feel like timelines, if you want, Stop it, Kyle. (laughs) Oh, no. Ah! Wow. I think that's the end of my Misty Moth beat me. Decapitated, like, you know. Oh, God. No, I I said I feel like they're just, they're great for, you know, engaging your players and making, making them feel like they're in something that's a lot bigger than they are. So that's, I guess that's my final thought now that I've been totally, <laughs> good God, Kyle. I uh, even this green screen. Uh, my final <laughs> thought is I'm going to say Sir Patrick Stewart is wrong and Malcolm McDowell is correct. Time <laughs> is the fire we burn in. It is not our friend that walks along next to us. Uh, <laughs> follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, join us on Discord. Buy our crap if you want it. Actually, we got a lot of cool crap. I, I yeah. will say that. Tombstone uh, shirt. That's got right, Tombstone shirt. A uh, few butcher on the night. So a few uh, a few more uh, designs are pending. There's going to be a sale next week. Uh, if you want a seat on the show, let us know. That's the most important thing because we are an interactive bunch. Don't worry, you won't screw up. And even if you do. Uh, it will hardly get noticed, or we will we'll let you, you kill the main you monster. <laughs> uh, fa- or watch us on Thursday. We've got a special 100th episode. Uh, Saturday is the campaign. I will just insert eye roll here because <laughs> of what we discussed in green room. Uh, we're dead. Okay, we're all going to die. That's probably. And they're probably all going to die at the hands of something stupid like a gelatinous cube. Uh, <laughs> folks, let's go ahead and wave and let's get the hell out of here. Thanks for watching us, folks. Don't forget to keep washing your hands because it's still not safe out there. <laughs> uh, it's fine. <laughs> Thank you for watching MHI-TV. This concludes our broadcast.